Hello and welcome to Rice Dairy TV. With me today is Mark Parathoner uh, from Linterform in Italy. Uh, Mark was born and raised in Italy, uh, came to the United States to go to school. Correct, yep. And worked out of school uh, for quite a bit. Yep. Uh, at the CBOT as a corn options market maker. Futures. Futures yep. market maker, as well as a Goldman Sachs. Yeah, okay. had a quick stint there too. A quick stint there yeah. as well. <laughs> uh, speaks quite a few languages and now, uh, again, is the head of risk management and business development at Linterform, based out of Milan, Italy. Uh, Mark, start us off. What is Linterform, the company you're with now, and why why are they interested in dairy futures markets? Yeah. So um, Linterform is a company that um, was founded over 50 years ago. Um, our core business is the, um, the physical brokerage of um, dairy products from liquid milk to, to cheese to butter. Um, the, company, the company was um, first started in, in, in Bolzano which is a, a city up in northern, northern Italy. And it, it's a very important spot for the, um, for the big trade of liquid milk and also other cheese um, dairy products that we have between this area of Europe into Italy, which Italy is a, um, a very um, strong uh, country that uh, needs milk since we kind of, for geographic reasons, we don't have our enough own supply of liquid milk. So we always source uh, milk from 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 this area also from from this area from france but our um, main business is facilitate the trade between this area here um, into italy where then they they work the milk in the all the different um, finished products um, and right now we are based in in milan where where our headquarters are how old is the company the company is over 50 years old um, yeah so has quite some history um, it was founded by the, the, the father of the current owner, um, Christian, you yeah. met him too, and yeah. Excellent. So that's, that's a really interesting milk shed right there, right? Southern, right. Southern Germany. Yeah, which is a strong, strong milk uh, production, production area. Um, you if you think it. Bavaria as an area produces more milk than the Netherlands, you know, and the Netherlands is known to be a, a big milk production um, country. So it's a it's a very important a very important region. And you have this part, which is Italy, where you know we're always short on milk because of of, of geographic reasons. But we consume a lot of milk, you know, mozzarella, uh, grana padano, parmigiana, all products that need a lot of milk. So. Um, you know, it's a country that's always um, looking for milk. And you, at your role at the company, you're working on risk management for the company and maybe for some of the company's customer partners. Exactly. So that's that's why you know the, we we um, we entered this this um, this world of of the futures uh, in the dairy, um, and that's kind of why I was brought on board with this company, giving my expertise in in the futures market. You know the. The, um, the company saw that there is a, a big demand um, from the industry to have tools that help them to have a little a, a long term view in the market you know especially for um, Italian buyers you know that are are um, constantly you know faced with with the strong volatility that we have in in, in our industry so there was a, a strong request from our customers in the physical market to have something that could help them um, to protect against their risk. Got it. And you have, uh, really excited to talk to you about this today. You did a terrific job. There's you here. Right. A uh, fantastic white paper that talks about the need for cheese futures. Correct. Yeah. In Europe. Yes. And you partnered with uh, the university. It's a business school there. Correct. In yep. Italy. Yep. Um, and any, I would encourage anybody to read this and read it thoroughly because it's really thoughtful analysis of what's going on there. Let's jump to the conclusion. Let's cut to the chase here. Right. This is a video. Uh, yes. Europe needs a cheese contract. Introduction of cheese contract will create sustainable liquid milk contract. Talk me through that. Yeah, so um, since I've been o observing um, the, you know, the European dairy market, you know, I, um, I noticed what a big role cheese plays, plays in Europe probably even more so than, than it's in the United States. And given my, ex, 
experience I had here in the United States and I saw how, how um, um, in the United States everything is structured with a different class contract. Um, I thought it would be probably a really good idea to have a cheese contract because um, it would help um, to create a synthetic milk price um, like we have here in the United States that derives its value um, off of the of cheese. Um, right now, as you know, we have you know uh, two main contracts, which is the skim milk powder and the butter in Europe, mm -hmm. and farmers are using um, these two products to create a synthetic milk price. But um, you know, unfortunately, often. Um, those two products don't really reflect where the market is at because um, so much goes into cheese and so much depends on, on the price of cheese. So like most of the farm gate price that's paid out in Europe is based off, okay, where is the cheese price? So I think, it, you know, so my thought was, well, if the farm gate price is based out of what the cheese contract is, what the cheese price, the cheese market is, why don't you create a, a cheese contract so the farmers that have an option to to hedge, you know, their milk price thanks to that cheese contract. So not only a tighter correlation for the farmer, but also given the cheese industry, right? Exactly. More reliable. Exactly. Yeah. Um, right. So this is something like half of all uh, the milk in Europe goes to Correct. cheese. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Between 45, 50 percent of the, you know. And based on that theory, you ran you ran numbers and said. Uh, let's go and, and correct me if I've got right. this wrong. So over here is LTO, which right. is a pan-European milk price. Correct. If yeah. there is such a thing. Such a thing. It is, yeah. It's kind of like it's a, a statistical number w w where they include the main co-ops um, um, and create an average um, milk price. You've got a, a German milk price, right. French milk price, right. Italian milk price, right. and then running these correlations against. Basically, you've created a synthetic cheese. Right. So basically, I kind of created my, my own class 3 and my own um, class 4 contract. I kind of um, based off my formula, of the, the American formula, and I thought, okay, so if, if, if I'm able to, to create these two um, milk, synthetic milk values and I run a correlation over the last uh, four years um, between these synthetic milk prices and what has been paid out in Europe, in, in farm gate price, where do I get a stronger correlation? And I saw that by and large, or by a, 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 a great degree of confidence that the correlation is much, much stronger um, using a synthetic milk price that derives its value off of cheese and not off of butter and, and skim milk powder, as we can see in the numbers here. And, and just to point it out, that result is basically pan-European, so LTO milk right. versus your cheese index, 94% exactly. correlation. Same milk price versus skim and butter, right. 74 percent. Right. And, and what I think is, is the most important part is like I, I also calculated the standard deviation and the, um, so the, the spread, so the the standard de the the variation of the, of the spread between the, my synthetic milk price and the farm gate price, right? So kind of to figure out where would I have a lower basis risk, right? Yeah. With, with with that thing, and, and as we can see here, with um, with my, my um, synthetic milk price, we have a way lower standard deviation than we have with uh, the butter and skim milk um, powder um, milk contract. So I think that's very important because, you know, we, in the industry we often talk about basis risk and how we're able to, um, to minimize the basis risk. And so this for me was the, the most important result to have like a lower um, standard deviation of the, of the spread. Got it. And for, if you can, for a layman, what the difference, I mean, the state, why is that standard deviation on the spread? Right. So, so the spread important. between the, the, the cheese milk value that I calculated yep. and the farm gate price, how does it, you know, how much does it vary from, from month to month? Right. You know, and so as, as the lower you're able to keep this, this, this number with a higher degree of certainty, you're going to be able to, to hedge your, your, your future farm gate price. So this one be this uh, versus cheese being roughly a 2,000 number, this being over 5,000. Right. Over, you know, two times plus. Yeah, yes, exactly. More potential standard yes, deviation. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, and if we were, to, okay, you even created some graphs, right? right? So, uh, so as we can see, the, 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 um, sorry, there you go. the, the green light here is the, is the, um, 
the LTO uh, milk price. Okay. The, the blue light is the is the um, synthetic milk price that is um, created through the cheese contract, and the red line is the one that's uh, created with butter and uh, and skim milk powder. And as as we can see, um, you know the the, the synthetic. Um, synthetic cheese milk so to say tracks it way closer and has you know a way smaller spread yeah. versus the red if you see here like we have often like huge spreads between between what the farm gate price was and what the synthetic milk price was between butter and skim milk powder so great that's a great depiction of, it's, you know the correlation can kind of smooth out right exactly so this uh, is kind of the, the standard you know the standard yeah. deviation that we have and that's which is important to keep as low as possible when we're going to create this this synthetic prices that reflect um, so blue here uh, that's the cheese one correct yes and what does the P stand for in that index? That, that's yeah. my last name that's what I thought it's a, yeah, a little <laughs> <laughs> I like that I like that a lot uh, Excellent. <laughs> and if we were going to jump to uh, here real quick, I thought what was really interesting that you included in here as well. Okay, this is the last page of right. the white paper here. The introduction of a cheese futures contract that would be settled on a monthly average of a weekly published European Commission cheddar price. Right. Part of this, I'm amazed we just haven't, this hasn't happened yet. Right. Because, I mean, I understand, you know, the point that a lot of people make, you know, against this price because it's, um, it's lagging and, you know, and like contracts flowing into the, the, the determine this price that are more long term, you know, so people could detract, yeah, but this price is, um, is not really reflecting um, this, what the spreader spot market is at. But I think with every index, um, you use or with every kind of um, just statistical index that it's not determined by a, a live auction or or a, a real trade you're always going to have discrepancies from what people believe the market is at or where it should be and what the market really is at right we have the same right now if we if you look at the of, at the EX index of, of butter and skim milk powder, you know, it often happens, especially when the markets move quick, that, you know, you could make the, ar the argument, well, where the index is at is not where I could trade the butter or, or, or the skim milk powder in this, in this exact moment. Yeah, it's a great point. In every index out there that we have future settling to, right. whether it's the GDT or the CME, yeah or the USDA or the European Commission, there are different imperfections. Right. But the point is, is it strong enough? Exactly, exactly. Um, and, and that's kind of the point I want to make with the paper, you know. I mean, even if it's not, um, in theory, the, the perfect solution, or like it, sh it should be the right reference price, if you look at the results, well, I can show the results and saying, well, yes, but look how strong of a correlation I was able to get and look what a, a little standard deviation I had compared to the to the farm gate prices in Europe um, in all the different countries right being imperfect is certainly not a reason to not do this exactly yeah. the fact that we've got the European Commission listing a price and, right and really quick you help me uh, find this today we go to, to the the European milk market observatory correct yeah uh, and essentially you'd click on milk yeah. dashboard yeah. here and that's going to take us to this, which I'm sure a lot of our viewers are familiar with, a very busy PowerPoint sheet. <laughs> um, but it's, it's that simple, right? It's this cheddar. Exactly. Is the one that you're... This is what I used. And, you know, I, for, when, I, when I did the, the various analysis, I, I used all different types of index prices that we have in Europe right now for cheese. You know, and, I, and every cheese index that I use and I threw in my formula, I always got better results than if I use butter or skim milk powder to replicate the farm gate price. So, you know, I'm not saying that we have to use this index price. I think, you know... You're posing the idea. Right, exactly. And, to, and the formula, you know, you can put in whatever input you want in the formula, you know, and then you just see the results and whatever gives you a higher um, correlation and the lowest lo the lowest standard deviation I think should be the should, is going to be the best the best option you know I, I use this price because it's it's the most transparent one it's it's um, published by the European Union um, so I think it's probably well audited 
Um, and so I think it's it's a good it's a good benchmark. In the U.S., we use the USDA right. cheddar prices. Yeah. Uh, and they typically have about a two-week lag yeah. to kind of the current. Yeah. And we talked about this a bit today. This right. is. Well, they, 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 they publish them them weekly too. This, it's also going to have a lag, you know, and a lot of longer-term contracts flew in and coming into this in, into this price. But I mean, it's still, you know, it's still a, a price that very well reflects um, the, the market. Yeah. Uh, and last thing too, just to talk through, because I can already imagine some people are looking at this and saying, in Europe, you don't understand the cheese situation is so complicated. Right. Cheddar. Right. Is a is a small part of the of the 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 cheese world in in in, um, in Europe. But you know, at the end, you could even. I mean, with the formal, you could even throw in like an an Edam or Gouda price. You know, that doesn't that doesn't matter as long as you have a a cheese price that it, that that's it, that is recognized and that it's somehow close to where the the spot market is. Um, you could use any type of cheese to you know to create the contract. You know, it doesn't have to be a, a cheddar-based futures contract. It could be a very well be an Edam Gouda or or um, a hard Italian. You know, it's um, yeah. I think the options there are open and. And um, you know the whole idea for, of the paper was just to 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 get people to think and and to explore also this way of um, of creating a um, a cheese contract and also then automatically create a liquid milk contract. Got it. Well, it's a fantastic paper. Uh, again, I would encourage everybody to give that a read um, and certainly reach out to, to Mark or definitely with any yeah. questions. Yes. Um, Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Merry been Christmas a here in the U.S. You and, too. And yeah, everywhere thank you. Else. And don't forget to subscribe. Rice Dairy TV.